JPS MedStar 101, trauma alert. JPS, go ahead. JPS MedStar 101, we're en route to your facility with an approximately 55-0-year-old male, 75 kilograms. Fell through an attic ceiling, approximately 15 feet onto a concrete floor, landing head first. We do have the patient fully immobilized, IVs established. Our ETA is going to be about 12 minutes. Any questions? Receive, see you on arrival. So I get all of my health care at JPS. I get my primary care through Dr. Haynes, the employee clinic here. And just recently, I had my son at JPS. I had a complicated pregnancy. And when I started out, I wasn't planning on having him at JPS. But as things started to get more into my pregnancy, and I realized how serious it could be, I switched my care over. I will never regret that decision. My son was born at 33 weeks and I had to leave him. So leaving your baby at the hospital is never something that you wanna do and for my husband and I, it was very difficult. Just the thought of having to leave him at another hospital in another NICU when I didn't know that they would love him and be there for him when I couldn't. I'm so thankful that he was at JPS and not anywhere else. A story that I like to tell to describe that heart best of all is of a trauma case whereby a family was involved in a car wreck. The family got separated because pediatrics is best taken care of by those experts. So the child went to uh, Cook, which is a pediatric facility, and that child's mother came here. The child's mother uh, had injuries so much that they uh, required surgery immediately. As the night progressed, it became evident to us that that uh, child was not going to survive. So as soon as that was known, our trauma surgeons arranged for an ambulance trip with that mother and one of our physicians to go over to Cook so that mother could say goodbye to that child and be with that child. That's the kind of heart that JPS has and that's why I'm involved in it. So I was rounding in the JPS Center for Cancer Care um, and came upon a patient who I'd seen before who was standing in the lobby of the cancer center in her terry cloth robe. So as I was just walking by, I stopped and said, um, you know, hello, how you're doing? I introduced myself and I complimented her robe. She grabbed my hand and said, thank you so much, you know, and told me a little bit about her story and why she was at the cancer center. Um, she was stage four um, for a very aggressive cancer. Um, and was actually having radiation therapy for that day. When I saw um, how much she really needed for me to stay with her through her procedure, at the end of the procedure, um, she said, would you check on me? She was having radiation therapy treatments in our JPS Center for Cancer Care for the next six weeks, twice a week. Um, and so I put it on my calendar, and every time she came to the cancer center, I would go and sit with her and check on her and see how she was doing. She unfortunately passed away. Her daughter, um, who she had told me that I reminded her of, which was why she wanted for me to sit with her through all of her treatments, um, came to the cancer center after she passed away. And in this patient's last moments, she had written sort of just a wish list um, for all of the people who cared for her during her last days. <laughs> so um, at the bottom of the list was a mention about me. Um, and she knew my name and she mentioned me by name and said, thank you for taking the time out of your day to sit with me. Um, and I wanted to give you my robes. Um, so she had a bunch of terry cloth robes. I didn't know this in the background. Um, her family, every time she had a treatment, they would buy her a new terry cloth robe. <laughs> and she thought it was totally wasteful, so she never opened them. She wore the same robe to her treatments. And every time I saw her, she had that robe on, and I would compliment her and talk to her about her robe. So, because I complimented her on the robes, she wanted to give me the robes that she never um, opened. I had those terry cloth robes made into a blanket. Um, and that blanket I keep in my office, and it's my true north. It reminds me of why we do this work. 
and the purpose of it and how we can really make a difference even just by sitting and holding someone's hand. 12 years ago, I had been on a trip to Papua New Guinea on the other side of the world and I ended up getting malaria. So when I moved back to Fort Worth, I really came down with some serious symptoms. I could feel, you know, your, sort of your organs start to swell and I had this terrible abdominal pain. So I finally came to the hospital, crawled in, and I remember the hospital just embraced me from the moment I stepped foot. They took me immediately to the ER. They diagnosed me immediately with malaria, which is a very rare strain from the other side of the world. They put me in an isolated room and they gave me round the clock care for three or four days until I got better. And they saved my life. My son, Trevor Tennant, was admitted to JPS on June 12th of 2015 for the treatment of recluse spider bites. Ultimately, a diligent doctor diagnosed acute lymphoblastic leukemia. We were in the ICU for over three and a half months, and the quality of care was absolutely fantastic. Ultimately, Trevor became well enough to be discharged, and we went to another facility that specialized in the weaning from ventilators. He suffered quite a setback at that facility and became septic, and his condition became critical. The doctors asked me what I wanted to do, and I immediately said, I want my son back in JPS ICU now. Trevor passed away on February 27th, exactly eight months from diagnosis. His memory and his spirit will forever be linked to JPS. And the compassion and dedication the staff showed me and my family was just so special to me. The ICU staff went above and beyond. So like I said before, he they were meeting his physical needs as well as his emotional and mental needs. Um, they did so much more for him. Treated the whole patient. I can speak from personal experience that the quality of care that I received when I was a patient here was top notch. So we get people who are in orange jumpsuits all the way to Armani suits. Here you have compassion at every level because trauma knows no socioeconomic boundaries. Every single person is a VIP. It's very different to work for JPS and be part of that family that gives the care, but then to be on the receiving side of it, it makes it to where I don't know that I would ever have any kind of passion to work anywhere else. When I was sick, my story became the focal point of international news. But my story really is not that unique. Yeah, it was dramatic, but there are people with similar stories right here in Fort Worth every day who get no media attention. They get no news headlines. They're suffering through tragedy anonymously and alone. And JPS has the opportunity to make a difference in those people's lives. That's what we do. We take care of the people who have a hard time accessing the medical system in this country. We take care of people who don't have anywhere else to turn or who have turned everywhere else and not gotten the help they needed.